It is a great pleasure this evening to have all of you, our family, together in this place uh, to celebrate the ministry of Bishop Middleton. Uh, Bishop, you have been the right person, the right bishop, at the right time in the right place, and we thank you for that. You have been to us our spiritual center, our calm, steady presence, and you have been to us a friend in Christ Jesus, and we thank you for that. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Sisters and brothers, we are gathered here this evening to worship God and to witness to our common faith and ministry by celebrating the ministry of Bishop Jane Allen Middleton. To God be all the glory, honor, and praise. ¿Acaso no lo sabes? ¿Es que no lo has oído? El Dios eterno, el Señor, el creador de los confines de la tierra, no se fatiga ni se cansa. Él da fuerzas al fatigado, y al que no tiene fuerzas, aumenta el vigor. Aún los mancebos se fatigan, aumenta el vigor, y los jóvenes tropiezan, vacilan, pero los que esperan en el Señor renovarán sus fuerzas. Se remontarán con, los, con las alas como de las águilas. Correrán y no se cansarán. Caminarán y no se fatigarán. Do you not know? Have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He will not grow tired or weary, and his understanding no one can fathom. He gives strength to the weary and increases the power of the weak. Even youths grow tired and weary. Even young men stumble and fall. But those who, have, who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not be faint. और जब वे उनके पांव धो चुका और अपने वस्त्र पहनकर भोजन करने बैठ गया तो उसने उनसे कहा क्या तुम समझे कि मैंने तुम्हारे साथ क्या किया तुम मुझे गुरु और प्रभु कहते हो तुम ठीक ही कहते हो क्योंकि मैं वही हूं यदि मैंने प्रभु और गुरु होते हुए तुम्हारे पैर धोए तो तुम्हें भी एक दूसरे के पैर धोना चाहिए क्योंकि मैंने तुम्हें नमूना दिया है कि तुम भी वैसा ही करो जैसा मैंने तुम्हारे साथ किया है मैं तुमसे सच सच कहता हूं कि दास अपने स्वामी से बड़ा नहीं और ना ही भेजा हुआ अपने भेजने वाले से बड़ा होता है तुम इन बातों को जानते हो यदि उन पर चलो तो तुम धन्य हो मैं तुमसे तुम सबके विषय में नहीं कहता मैं उसको जानता हूं जिसने जिन्हें मैंने चुन लिया है परंतु यह इसलिए कि है कि पवित्र शास्त्र का वचन पूरा हो जो मेरी रोटी खाता है उसके मेरे विरुद्ध लात उठाई है उसके होने से पहले मैं तुम्हें अभी बता देता हूं जिससे कि जब यह पूरा हो जाए तो तुम विश्वास करो कि मैं वही हूं मैं तुमसे सच सच कहता हूं कि जिसमें जिस जिसे मैं भेजता हूं उसे जो ग्रहण करता है वह मुझे ग्रहण करता है और जो मुझे ग्रहण करता है वो मेरे भेजने वाले को ग्रहण करता है परमेश्वर का वचन After Jesus washed the disciples' feet he put on his robes and returned to his place at the table He said to them, Do you know what I've done for you? You call me teacher and Lord, and you speak correctly, because I am. If I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you too must wash each other's feet. I have given you an example. Just as I have done, you also must do. I assure you, servants aren't greater than their master, nor are those who are sent greater than the one who sent them. Since you know these things, you will be happy if you do them. I'm not speaking about all of you. 
I know those whom I've chosen, but this is to fulfill the scripture. The one who eats my bread has turned against me. I'm telling this I'm telling you this now before it happens, so that when it does happen, you will believe that I am. I assure you that whoever receives someone I send receives me, and whoever receives me receives the one who sent me. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I was 14 when I first heard a call from God, but it didn't make a lot of sense to me. I had no idea what that meant, and I sort of muddled around, and in fact muddled around for many, many, many years, checking out other options. 20 years later, I was now a former teacher a stay-at-home mom, active in the community, and active in my church. And as I thought about all the things I did, I knew that of all my, of everything that I did, what touched my heart most was being in the church. I believed that indeed the church could transform the world, and I still believe that. And so one day I was talking with a friend on the phone, and we were both talking about what will we do with the rest of our lives. And she said to me, well, what do you really want to do? And for the first time, I uttered the words, I want to go to Yale Divinity School and be ordained. And she said, why don't you do it? I hung up the phone from the conversation and dialed the registrar at Yale Divinity School. And the veil was lifted. On behalf of Anthony Alexander and myself, members of the Northeastern Jurisdictional Committee on Episcopacy, we do certify that Bishop Jane Allen Middleton was duly elected a bishop of the United Methodist Church at the 2004 Jurisdictional Conference and has been assigned by the Northeastern Jurisdictional Committee on the Episcopacy to the Harrisburg area. And once again now, Central Pennsylvania, I ask you to welcome your bishop, Jane Allen Middleton. A wonderful welcome to your home, which, thanks be to God, is now my home. (laughs) I've learned that when one is in a new home, there are three important strategies and one essential strategy. First, you have to find your way around. Last week, I made my way to the Altoona District to Hollidaysburg. This week, I made my way here, passing much more of Pennsylvania than I expected to pass in order to get here. (laughs) The the second is, you need to eat the native food. (laughs) Zedna Haverstock brought us corn soup, and I've had sauerkraut, but I understand I won't really have qualified until I've had snit and hog maw and something called knep, nep, nep, knep, nep, nep. All those go together, snits and nep? Okay. Now, that sort of brings me to the third thing you have to do, which is to learn the native language. (laughs) So I'm practicing Langster, right? Langster. Langster. 
Lancaster. I'm practicing that. Those are the important tasks of finding your way around in a new place, but the essential is relationships, building relationships. And you are making that so easy. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thanks be to God, we are in a new day. A day of claiming God's frontiers across central Pennsylvania and beyond. We usually measure time by a watch. My watch band just broke, so I don't know how long this is going to go on, folks. <laughs> Who invited you, Mark? <laughs> oh. Oh, thanks. <laughs> but we're in the midst of God's time. It's a time of great change. In the Greek New Testament, we see the word kairos. It's a word that indicates it's a time that's different from any way we understand time. It's an important time of God with us and God pushing us to something new. When a church is overtaken by a burning desire to spread the good news of Jesus Christ, by an unstoppable commitment to reach out to people, something begins to happen. Show me a church that is absolutely on fire for Jesus Christ, and I will show you a church that is growing. Our histories as God's people are filled with the stories of those who took a leap of faith. Francis Asbury, I've been reading his journals, and he, he rode thousands and thousands of miles. Rode is the operative word here because it was on horseback, preaching as many as five and six times a day in order to follow where God was leading. That's our history. Is that so different from what God asks of us today? Now, my question to you, are you ready to do what it takes to be faithful to God? Are you ready to risk stepping out into that unknown place? Are you ready to proclaim Jesus wherever you go? Are you ready to give up your sacred places, even your church building, for the sake of the kingdom of God? Are you ready to take a leap of faith? You know, there's something very biblical about a change coming now in that we've been a conference for 40 years. It took the Israelites 40 years to find their way to the promised land. 40 years is a time of jubilee. It's a time for a fresh start. Might that be so for us? For this is the new day. And for this new day, we need a new story to live by. We need a story which proclaims hope for God's people, near and far. We need a story that speaks of the possibility of proclaiming the gospel of Jesus Christ in such a compelling way that lives will be transformed. We need to tell a story which reflects what we've been called to do to make disciples of Jesus Christ for the transformation of the world. Say it with me, will you? To make disciples of Jesus Christ for the transformation of the world.
A theme of Bishop Middleton's ministry among us is the mission of our church. If we've heard it once, we've heard it a thousand times. We are to make disciples of Jesus Christ for the transformation of the world. The transformation of the world is a key part of her passion. And our world has been transformed. The bishop's ministry has been recognized by the House of Representatives of the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. Citation. Whereas the House of Representatives of Pennsylvania is always pleased to acknowledge those spiritual leaders who contribute to the well-being of their communities and ultimately to all the people of this great commonwealth, and whereas Bishop Jane Stewart Allen Middleton is being honored upon her retirement as Bishop of the Susquehanna Conference of the United Methodist Church. And whereas Bishop Middleton was appointed to District Superintendent from 1999 until her election to the Episcopacy in the Northeastern Jurisdiction in 2004, Bishop Middleton, upon her assignment, has emphasized and became in assisting churches in growth and empowering clergy for effectiveness. Now, therefore, the House of Representatives of the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania extends warm congratulations to Bishop Jane Stewart Allen Middleton upon her well-deserved retirement, offers her best wishes for a very happy and rewarding future, and directs that a copy of this citation, sponsored by Representatives Glenn R. Grell, and Cheryl R. Delosier be transmitted to Bishop Jane Stewart Allen Middleton. Madam Bishop. The Bishop's ministry among us has also been recognized by our governor. To Bishop Middleton, it is an honor to join with the Northeastern Jurisdiction of the United Methodist Church, as well as the many congregations, ministries, and members served by its four common tables in celebration of your years of faithful service to the citizens of our commonwealth, nation, and world. It is especially poignant to recognize your impressive record and impeccable leadership as you preside over your final annual conference. Since you began your admirable career, you have demonstrated a dedication to improving your community and helping your fellow citizens. From your work as district superintendent to your current role as bishop, you have won the hearts of your entire community and your generosity, compassion, and leadership have earned you the respect of everyone who has had the, been touched by your kindness. Your strength and devotion have led your church to rise to a pinnacle, not only in your assigned Episcopal area, but throughout the entire Northeastern jurisdiction. You have succeeded in promoting fellowship, respect, unity, and peace in each of your assignments. You have spent years caring for your fellow citizens, cultivating your beliefs, and learning how to best serve United Methodist churches, growing congregations and communities. Your guidance and commitment has left an indelible impact on the hearts and minds of every member of the United Methodist Church. As governor and on behalf of all Pennsylvanians, I congratulate you on your retirement. May you find abounding happiness in the years ahead as you enjoy more time with your family and friends. Signed. Tom Corbett. Our bishop's ministry is also recognized by the United States House of Representatives through Representative Glenn Thompson and the United States Senate through Senator Pat Toomey. And her ministry is even recognized by the White House. Bishop Jane Allen Middleton, I am pleased to join your family, 
friends, and congregation in congratulating you upon your retirement after many years of service as Bishop of the United Methodist Church. At moments like this, we are reminded of the abiding truth that each of us has the power to create a better world for ourselves and our children when we do God's work here on earth. I hope you will look back on your accomplishments and contributions with joy and pride. Congratulations again upon your retirement. I wish you continued success and blessings in the years to come. Sincerely, Barack Obama, President of the United States. Bishop Middleton, you have transformed the world, and you have transformed us. Thank you. After all of that, I'm not sure where to begin, except that I would go back to your words that were shared to us in the video, that the vital thing is relationships. It has been my privilege to represent the laity of this annual conference in our conversations, and I've tried to listen to you and I've tried to share them with our bishop. I can tell you that she set a high bar for herself as far as establishing relationships. Her intent was to visit every congregation within this annual conference. The Episcopacy Committee learned from her own words, I think I've bitten off more than I can chew. (laughs) But she did an extremely admirable job. I'm not sure if you actually totaled how many you visited, but it was quite a large number. Um, The reality is that relationships is who our bishop is. All of you, I'm sure, can attest to that. She has always greeted everyone, clergy or laity, as a friend before ever being considered your bishop. This is the mark of who she is and who her ministry is. And it has been my privilege to work with you. Thank you, Bishop. While I stand representing my friends on cabinet, they are not responsible for anything that I will say. (laughs) First, I feel like I need to say a word to Jack. Jack, thank you uh, for your presence among us and the gifts that you've brought to this annual conference. The gracious spirit. (laughs) But I also want to say this. We've run interference for you for eight years. (laughs) We've kept her busy. It's all yours now. (laughs) About four and a half years ago, I was sitting at a hotel at the Baltimore airport. It was a jurisdictional Episcopacy committee meeting. And the bishops were from the college were coming in one at a time to have a check-in with the committee. And Vance and I were to greet our bishop when she came and to sit beside her so she would feel safe and secure. They asked questions about ministry and goals, and then they got into 
How are you caring for yourself? And with great pride, our bishop said, I exercise every day. I go to the gym at 5 o'clock in the morning. And then she said this, I've got muscles. (laughs) And she turned to me and said, feel them. Now, that sounded like a chargeable offense to me. (laughs) But she persisted and said, feel them. So I did. (laughs) Our bishop indeed has muscles, spiritual muscles. And for eight years, we have been the beneficiary of her willingness to use those muscles. Bishop, you have taught us how to laugh in a new way. You've taught us how to cry. You've taught us how to pray. You've taught us how to hate croquet. (laughs) But most of all, you have equipped us to be more effective at living the mission of making disciples of Jesus Christ for the transformation of the world. You are deeply loved. You will be deeply missed. And I hope as you continue to lead in this church that you will continue to say to people, feel my muscles. Well, I never had the opportunity to feel the bishop's muscles. (laughs) However, I do concur with Mark that she has flexed those spiritual muscles in the years that she's been here, particularly in the area of youth. Bishop Middleton has always demonstrated an immense receptiveness and joy at seeing youth participate in a more active role in this annual conference. This is particularly has been demonstrated by her active and virulent participation in our confirmation rallies. She's always greeted the young confirmands with much joy and enthusiasm and has even flexed her muscles on stage when she got down and did push-ups every year without fail. However, where the bishop's ministry has most touched me was last summer when I was at youth leadership camp. The bishop came and spoke to me about servant leadership. This is a principle that our bishop has truly embodied in her years with us. She is a spiritual guide and force and leader for this conference, but she also is a servant to us, a representative. And she and I have taken those principles that she taught me and have attempted to apply them to my life. This was particularly helpful as I went down the road to general conference The bishop was always there as a force of wisdom, guidance, and reassurance through all the ups and downs. I am very, very grateful for that. Bishop, I'm sure I speak for many when I say that I am proud to have had you as our Episcopal leader, and you will be sorely missed. Thank you. Bishop Middleton, it hardly seems possible, but just about eight years ago at this time, uh, Mr. Salsgiver and yours truly became partners in crime. Uh, We decided that um, as we were getting ready to go to jurisdictional conference in Syracuse, New York, um, we were going to get a new bishop. And we knew that, um, can I say this, Tom? Okay. We knew that um, in all likelihood, it might be a woman bishop. 
And so uh, we decided that we thought it might be a good idea if we put our heads together and we maybe uh, would have some kind of a part to play in the person that might become that new bishop. And so we kind of started a little um, campaign going that when we got to Syracuse, we were going to write in Jane Allen Middleton as an Episcopal nominee. We did a little bit of research, first of all, though, Tom. Uh, One thing we did, we contacted uh, our colleague and friend in New York Conference, Ernest, just to make sure what New York was doing. And he assured us, well, no, this time they were not uh, taking that nominee to jurisdictional conference. So we did decide that this was something that we wanted to do, and we got our delegation completely behind us, and we were just thrilled uh, that we made it happen, and um, at least we think we helped to make it happen, and uh, it was just so neat to, uh, Jack and I talked about this the other day, uh, (laughs) that when Jack got to Syracuse, somebody told me he had to come down there, And he had no idea until he got there and friends met him and said, how does it feel to be married to a bishop? And uh, needless to say, Jack was quite surprised, but we were quite thrilled uh, that we feel that we had some little part in actually uh, having all this happen. And so in celebration of the eight years that we've been privileged to have you with us, uh, we have just one, um, one little token of our love and appreciation that we would like to present to both you and Jack. And uh, I'll read this to you, if you'd like to hand stand, and we will give this to you. But we know that uh, when you uh, leave us after jurisdiction, you're going to be packing up and you're going to be getting ready to move to your retirement home. So uh, we know how stressful moving can be, but we're hoping that after you get moved into your home in Connecticut, uh, that you might enjoy this gift that we would like to give to you. You are invited to be our guests on the dates of your choosing uh, in October, possibly, of 2012. This invitation will include a two-night, three-day stay in Colonial Williamsburg at the Williamsburg Lodge, with breakfast, admission tickets, the whole gamut uh, there, and also a gift card uh, to cover all of your meals and other expenses while you are there. So we hope that you will enjoy this personal gift. Thank you. Uh, to Will. Thank you. Thank you. Bishop, we watched uh, the other day as we worked to swat a mosquito. (laughs) To swat away the debt for Mission Central. We know that you and Jack have taken an immensely personal interest in Mission Central, by working, by talking about it wherever you go. And so on Monday, the treasurer's office will write a check to the loan fund to be put against the principle of Mission Central, gifts by a grateful congregations throughout this conference in the amount of $20,000. thought about this ahead of time. The first thing I want to say is 
That's the first time I heard that whole story about Zedna and Tom conspiring to get me elected. I wasn't even a candidate. And I thought it was God that made that happen. (laughs) Who knew? This has been such a oh, darn. <laughs> this has been such a remarkable journey. How do I even begin to describe it? Uh, from the moment of uh, that amazing election, to have the privilege to be a bishop of the church is something that I never thought could have happened, and. We were so not expecting it that Jack wasn't even present, as you heard. Uh, I, told, I called him somewhere along the evening, and, and uh, it really didn't look like it was going to happen. And I said to him, you know, I really think I'd like for you to be with me. Well, this was before we had cell phones. And Jack was uh, actually at our, at our now what will be our retirement home, so he had no dress-up clothes whatsoever. He went to Walmart and bought a tie and stopped and got a very bad haircut. <laughs> and pulled up expecting to offer sympathy to me and, my, and our friend met him to give him that news. And then I had the great good fortune to be assigned, to, to, to be assigned here in the then Central Pennsylvania Conference. It has been one unfolding after another of God's miracles. I couldn't have asked for a better place to be. And then as it evolved, we became a new conference. And I was gifted with the privilege of being a part of that as well. What I've learned through all of this is that God's grace is greater than we can ever even anticipate. God's goodness is more magnificent than we could hope for. And God is with us. God answers our prayers. God truly offers hope. I've learned also of the goodness of people the extraordinary generosity of people. uh, And I've also been able to expand my world. It is such a privilege, and I'd love for him to come forward right now, to have Bishop Yambasu here. Would you just stand and, and have a chance to greet the people and for them to greet you? This beautiful man who is the leader of the people of Sierra Leone, has become a dear friend. And would you give him a greeting? Thank you, Jack. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Some of you may not know that the beginning of ministry in Sierra Leone happened in the 1900s. In the 1800s, by our predecessor conference that began a mission work in that country that even today lives on. The expanse of God's grace and God's love and God's capacity to use us is unlimited indeed. So, I have a gift for you as well. I began thinking about what's, what's, what's central in what I would want to say to you. And I've always been so deeply moved by the question the Pharisees asked Jesus when they said, what's, what's the greatest commandment? They were hoping to trap him. And, and remember what he said? He said, love God 
with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength, and your neighbor as yourself. And so I have a gift to you, and I'll ask the uh, tellers to begin to distribute this. We hope we'll have enough for everyone. There are 1,500 of them, so let's hope we do. I might ask if, you, if you're here with your spouse to take one between you, and then if we have enough, we'll give you everyone one. This is a little pen, and it says at the top, love, and then below it, God, others, self. This, for me, is the essence of what we are to do. To love God, to love our neighbors, and to love ourselves. In a way, this is the whole of the gospel. And so I offer this as a gift to you. I also offer my heart. This is a significant transition, and I think I should also mention that one of the reasons most people are now praying for Jack know that I am going to be engaging in the JIP when I retire. It's the Jack Improvement Project. (laughs) He seems rather dismayed every time I mention that. So, Jack, you may come and speak, too, if you want. Well, I, uh, I would like to just say a word. Um, I was so overjoyed to come to this part of the world because, you know, it is the antique and classic car capital of the world. <laughs> Carlisle, Hershey, what more could you want? But today, um, I was uh, hosting the bishop from Fort Worth, and uh, he's a wonderful man, and I said, Bishop Mike, where would you, what would you like to see? Where would you like to go? He knows about my passion for cars. I thought, well, you know, the AACA Museum at Hershey or the Carlisle Fairgrounds or the Fairgrounds Diner down at Carlisle where I, where I sometimes hang out with the Earl of Carlisle. I hope the Earl of Carlisle is here tonight. But I uh, was very interested. He said, Jack, I'd like to go to Gettysburg. Great. So we went to Gettysburg and... I want to encourage all of you. I've been to Gettysburg many times, and I'm sure you have too, to the battleground. But if you haven't seen the new museum, be sure and see it. It's a wonderful uh, museum. We did the package. We got down there early this morning. We did, we did the, the cyclorama first. It's a 360-degree theater of, of all that um, went on there in those four or five days. I'm, I'm getting to the point. <laughs> She's hitting me in the back. <laughs> and we saw the... This is part of the JIP. <laughs> then we saw the, uh, the particular points on the, on, on the battlefield with the new buses that they have. And then we came back and saw the the new displays uh, in the museum. And the newest, perhaps you haven't seen it yet, are the um, murals and the the media things that they, the multimedia things that they've arranged for the community in and around Gettysburg during that time. And I was really overwhelmed by it. Uh, It's the towns, uh, the people, individually and collectively, who came from 40 miles, a circumference of 40 miles out, with buckets and shoes 
and torn pieces of cloth, whatever they could get, to bring to help the boys from the north and the south. Men, women, and children coming from as far away as 40 miles out. And I, I'm just sitting here tonight thinking, those faces in those pictures, in that multimedia presentation, are these faces, my friends. You are the people of God. And I, you're the same people. I'll always believe you're the same people that helped those people on the battleground with buckets. And I praise God for you. I'll never forget you. God bless you all. Amen. In fact, I should just do a little stepping to get, <laughs> get some of your my pedometer. Steps in. Yeah. All right, I need to loosen up. I don't want to be all slouchy, but I do need to be. Uh, there you go. Now we're doing, now we're doing, now we're doing photos too. Now we're doing senior pictures. <laughs> When, well, have we, you, when have we ever done that? Out of character. <laughs> well, we'll, have to, we'll watch it if it's kind of crawling. No, we're not going to watch it. <laughs> Overtime, Jerry. He's the one who saves the day. <laughs> Your very own fry and wrecking yes. bar. Yes.
will you join us now in the litany to honor Bishop Middleton? Sisters and brothers, we are gathered here from the north and the south, from the east and from the west, to honor Bishop Jane Allen Middleton. We have come to this place and this time to celebrate together your time with us as Episcopal leader. We want to affirm all you have accomplished with us over the last eight years. We celebrate that you have tirelessly traveled the length and breadth of this, this annual conference to be present with us in our local congregations. We recognize that you discerned a vision for our annual conference and carried it forth with grace and love. You carefully and skillfully crafted us into a new relationship, sculpting a new community, the Susquehanna Annual Conference. We affirm that you have led us by example, living as a faithful disciple of Jesus Christ, striving to transform the world through your words and deeds. We applaud your work with the Bolivian mission and the many ways that you have championed Mission Central. We have witnessed your passion for children and youth through your personal vision of confirmation. We have benefited from your work with the denomination's board of church and society, reminding us to reach out to the least, the lonely, and those whom we fail to notice. We have challenged our to open our hearts to those beyond our walls and to consider those not yet here. We acknowledge that you have not micromanaged us, but instead have prayerfully discerned all that we may do together. You have modeled for us a new way to be the cabinet, encouraging the creation of a new position that would continue to focus on church vitalization and new places for new people. You have also modeled hospitality for us, even to the extent of opening your home to the cabinet in sharing with us your new and ever-changing rules for croquet. We <laughs> pray that you have led us with grace and humor, allowing ample time for all voices to be heard. You risk being vulnerable for the sake of the mission even daring to be the only bishop in recent memory to be dumped in a dunk tank. We have been blessed by your spiritual guidance that continually reminds us to seek God journeying for our lives and our ministries. We have witnessed that with integrity and with grace, you have administered the Book of Discipline. We have been blessed that you have led us without management. You have inspired and guided us into a new day, and you have helped to create a learning community where we all might grow together into Christ. As you step forward into the promise of tomorrow, may you and Jack enjoy the journey that will unfold. You have prepared us for the next next faithful steps that we will take as the Susquehanna Annual Conference, and we thank you for your leadership and we trust in the path that is before us as we anticipate what God dreams for us as well. We, we come, come this night with thankful hearts for all that has been. We come with joy for all that is. We come with hope for the days yet to come. Thank you, Bishop Middleton, for your faithful leadership among us. May God continue to bless you and Jack through the years ahead.